Hi everyone, my name is Yifun Liu, and today I'm going to take the uh, IMS 470 final presentation for you guys. Uh, so the the topic of this presentation is teach us something. So first of all, I want to express my excitement. Uh, IMS 470 is one of my favorite courses. Uh, I like playing games, but Parents and teachers do not encourage us to play games when we should study. When we was uh, around 10 years old, the uh, 15 years old, yes. So I'm glad that this class can let me get close to games and esports so that I have a more comprehensive and in depth understanding of games and esports. Therefore, I'm full of hope to complete each assignment of this course, and I hope to complete the final presentation seriously. Uh, next, uh, I will introduce my favorite game, Honor of Kings, and uh, I will uh, use HUK to represent uh, the Honor of Kings uh, in the rest of the presentation. And tell you about this game, you may not know the details and knowledge. So, in order to complete the final presentations as required, uh, I will divide the presentation into two parts. Teach the class something new. This is the first part. And the second part is teach Dr. Phil something new. So, in the previous part, I will say something about my understanding of HUK. Uh, of course, uh, these contents are not known by everyone, so I think it can be something new. And in the part two, I will talk about some of the tricks Dr. Phil didn't know about the game. Uh, by the way, if you find out that you already know what I'm saying, please don't tear me down. Thank you very much. So first, I'd like to briefly introduce the game. Uh, its name is On of Kings. Uh, I call it HUK. And it is the most downloaded mobile game in the world in recent years. Many people think mobile games only exist on computers, but this game can be played on mobile phone. Uh, it's convenient and simple, but even so, I think there's a lot of skill in it and not everyone can play it very well. So today my topic is uh, some uh, new concept about the mobile games. As you can see, uh, the image on the left is one of HUK's previous covers, and the image on the right is the game's app in the mobile app store. Uh, if possible, I'd like everyone to download the game and try it out first uh, to get a feel for what it, what it's like to put a mobile game on your phone. Uh, I think this is a more conductive to my presentation. And I think uh, when you do the presentation or after presentation, you can play a new game. It's, it, it is also a very uh, excited thing. Uh, I think this is, uh, of course, uh, if you are using an iPhone, you will need a Chinese ID to log into the App Store before you can download the game. But uh, I'm sure it won't be your problem if you truly want to play this game. <coughs> so now, I'm going to do my first part. Uh, everybody is ready? Uh, whatever, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you about mobile games is that in HOK, uh, there are position called support. I think every student play uh, LL or Dota 2 will all know there's ADC, tank, jungle, mid, and support. The support in HOK really follows ADC all the time. Uh, this may come as a surprise to many of you, but it's a fact that we all recognized in HUK. 
it involves an ideas and a concept that affects the whole game, and th that is uh, consciousness. So, what is consciousness in a mobile game? First, we need to understand what consciousness is, which is a very abstract concept. My, my understanding of the consciousness is this. Uh, in general, it's the analyze of game planning skills and tactics ability. It may have some deep for newcomers, said popular point consciousness is can tell you. Uh, just like what to do after 5 seconds, what to do after 3 minutes later, and do what is good for you, good for the team, what profit is higher, and according to each other to reveal some of the signs, and how to counter your enemy's action, and how to deal with his action. So for many novices, the minimap is known to exist, but it is uh, rarely seen consciously. So the minimap is in the top left corner of the HOK Games interface. So what I'm saying here is that minimap is especially important for whatever beginner or some uh, older players. A look minimap, uh, we can also call it a small map, is the most important proposal is to know where the regiment will break out. When the blue circle with the red circle is very concentrated, we we'll realize the outbreak of Mimir is the team fight. Uh, this time you want to make a choice. The choice is detailed in the sense of priority uh, behind whether or not to go to a support group. Uh, the most uh, direct judgment based on is the regiment war, war point is it far from you or not. Uh, this information can be obtained from the map. And the defensive towers is attacked, flicking tips on the small map. This time to uh, shoot consciously to guard tower, unless you have a very good reason to give up the tower. A tower is under attack will be similar to the hero as a drop of blood. Uh, reflected in the small map uh, is the color of the defensive towers be thought gradually become hollow. Uh, completely empty. The color of the tower can choose a carrier to attack the tower. Let it lose the ability of defense. So what I'm going to say today, because I think uh, what I say about uh, maybe many people will know. So what I want to say today, it is a change to the traditional mobile concept that makes support more functional, because it is really uh, have a relationship with uh, consciousness. So I must uh, mention the consciousness. So I'm going to do the rest of the presentation of this part as we go along. So uh, again, I need to say, I don't want to tell you guys how to play support. I want to send you a new mobile co game concept. Uh, in the years, uh, HUK has been running for uh, uh, many people, many players, and uh, this uh, functional support uh, has gained popularity, and everybody think it's okay. But I think it only exists uh, in the mobile now. So the first thing I want to tell you is that in this HUK, there will be a small monster in the river on the uh, upper uh, middle and the lower three roads. Uh, killing it can gain a lot of exper experience and coin. The middle of the channel monsters offers the most experience, so it's a must have. So you can see the first picture. You can see the, the little uh, white monster. It is a monster belong to middle, middle river. Uh, at the beginner of the game, 30 seconds, all the monsters in the wild area will refresh. Uh, one, minute, one minute, the middle channel monster will refresh. Uh, two minutes, uh, the road and the next channel will generate a monster. 
they can respectively improve the experience of the team and strengthen their own lineup. So I'm going to call them experienced dragons and soldier dragons. Uh, these two dragons will only appear 10 minutes ago and refresh at most twice. <coughs> so after 10 minutes, uh, the two monsters will be upgraded and their states will be greatly improved. HUK is a mobile game on the mobile phone, so its map are uh, not as big as those in Dota 2 and AOL. You can see that, you can see this picture, it's, it's very, very small. The problem with the change is that the pace of the game will be very fast, and the players, uh, the players' support uh, to the teammates will be improved. I mean the speed. A normal game usually in HOK ends in less than 15 minutes. So the speed of the game means that players must understand the resources on the map. Whichever, whichever side can gain the advantages in a short time is likely to win. Uh, once the game has reached 20 minutes, the economic and experience advantages will be gradually whipped out, and it is uh, difficult to judge which team will be the winner. So the first important role uh, in controlling the game is support. So which bring me back to what I said above. Support doesn't protect ADC, so what should he do? Uh, first, you need to determine the combined ability of the enemy jungle players at level 1. Uh, it's also on the earliest early stage of the game. If the hero selected by the other jungle is obviously stronger than ours, uh, then support should help jungle to uh, two minutes ago and wait for our jungle players to have the combat, combat ability to kill other monsters and uh, gank. Uh, if the, uh, this is very important. If the opponent's jungle has super combat ability in the early stage, he will probably take his support into our wide area and kill our jungle when he grabs the buff, whatever is red buff or blue buff. In this way, add the, uh, all the wild natural resources I mentioned above, just like the uh, three little monster and the experienced dragons and the soldier dragons, uh, uh, we will lose the grab right, and the whole game will be in a very passive situation. On the, on the other hand, uh, if each of our heroes has a strong fighting abilities in the early stage, as a spot, you can still choose to follow in jungle to improve the efficiency of hunting monsters and ganking. So, it's not just that, it's, it's the it's a total what I want to say, of course not. When we are playing the game, we seldom appear our team is very strong, the other team is very weak situation. So the balance of power is going to change a lot. So what does support do when it, it is in the balance? I bet you didn't know. Uh, The answer is uh, the mid. Yeah, that's right. With mid, support follow with mid from level one to ten minutes before the game, because I said it before ten minutes before is critical for HOK. So somebody will ask why? Because the middle is the shortest on the mobile map. It means that the middle lines will meet the earliest. Support following mid allows mid to quickly handle power lines early on and uh, selectively support party members. Imagine, you guys can imagine that our support and mid uh, together process the power lines in 5 seconds to 10 seconds and quickly went to the ADC road for support. But at this time, the other side's mid is still dealing with the power lines also uh, unable to support the ADC or the tank. 
so you are going to end up with a 3 vs 2 situation. The first time may not be effective to killing enemy, but you can choose to push the tower or poke the enemy. Use time difference, use the time gap again and again. Always create more advantages. There are many other ideas besides this, uh, so as a support uh, that can quickly help mid handle power lines. You can choose to go into the opponent's field with mid. Uh, there is a lot of meaning in going into the opposition zone. Uh, first of all, if you see a monster uh, in uh, in the zone, you can kill it. It's a squeeze on local economy resources. Of course, we can choose to quit while we are good, but you are support. As a support, there is more to consider. Uh, uh, when uh, we need to go into the enemy's field and observe the survival of the wild monster to determine the location of the enemy's jungle players. For example, you can see the, the, the second picture. Uh, 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 I'm a support here. Uh, if you enter the red zone buff and find that the red buff is still alive, you can see that the red buff is still alive. Yes, you can tell that the opponent's jungle is in the blue zone and you can call your teammates to attack the buff in the enemy's field. Uh, what's more, uh, if the opponent's jungle choose blue buff first, uh, that means he won't choose to gank the players next to our red field, next to our red, red buff field for efficiency. Then we can come up with a variety of uh, countermeasures and choose more suitable experienced dragon or soldier dragon. This is a whole new way of thinking about mobile games that I want to introduce to you. And some people uh, may, might ask, uh, what about ADC? Is there no protection? Uh, let me tell you. Okay, uh, mobile game, in my opinion, is multiple. Uh, and we need to choose the method that best suits us as a team according to the situation. Uh, it's including uh, communication with uh, ADC in advance. So beyond that, uh, it's important to know how jungle handles the relationship between hunt and gank. Uh, wild monster refreshed for 30 seconds, middle monsters refreshed for 1 minute, experience dragon and soldier dragons refreshed for 2 minutes. These are all resources you need to control. And 10 minutes ago, if you can master these natural resources and play gank wheel, the game will have a big advantage. And I can see that you, uh, in this game, you uh, win for half. So, uh, so much for the first part. Uh, forgive me for not being able to say more, because mobile games are not math problems. Zero. There is only one correct answer to a math problem, but mobile games don't. In mobile games, uh, no choice is the best, only have the better choice. So if you are interested in these issues, or if you want to discuss uh, this game or these issues with me, uh, you're welcome to communicate with me by email at any time. So in the first part, I mainly introduce the most popular support gameplay concept in HOK to give you a new idea of mobile games. Uh, of course, these new ideas can also be found in, in the jungle mid, tank, or ADC, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway. The important thing is that we should keep exploring game. We should keep exploring everything, whatever is game, or job, or study, right? Then, came the second part, teach Dr. Phil something new. Because I think Dr. Phil is a professor specializing in esports, so I think Dr. Phil knows more about the uh, uh, esports knowledge than I do. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to show off to Dr. Phil. So I decided to uh, teach Dr. Phil the tricks of one of the most difficult heroes in HOK. Uh, personally, I like this. Uh, I like this hero very much because uh, she has a very special skill. Uh, 
a very special skill management, which may which many people dream of learning. Uh, so before I start with uh, the overall introduction, let me show you how Luna, uh, the hero, should play smoothly. Uh, hi, uh, welcome back. So the hero's name is Luna, and he is, uh, and she is positioned as a uh, mega and warrior, and she is officially recognized by the game company as HOK's most difficult hero. Uh, before introducing the gameplay, let me introduce the hero's skills. Uh, the first is her passive skills. Uh, Luna's first normal attack on a new target. Uh, charges the enemy, uh, and Luna's third normal attack uh, now deal additional spell damage and marks the enemy with moonlight. Uh, Luna's skill one can send a moonlight uh, shock wave in the specified direction, inflicting spell damage on hit enemies and imprinting moonlight marks on them. Luna's uh, skill two can center herself by drawing nearby enemies close and causing team to turn to gain a shield, while also gives them uh, moonlight marks. And Luna's skill 3 can charge a given direction, inf inflicting high sp spell damage on enemies in their path. Uh, so if, if Luna hits an enemy with the moon's mark, uh, the new moon's streak Cooldown uh, will be refreshed. Uh, to start with, to start with Luna's skill skill three refresh once uh, it hits the hero with the moon mark on his head. Uh, there are three ways to put a moon mark on an enemy's head: it's skill one, skill two, and the third normal attack. By circulating the moon's imprint in all three ways. Uh, Luna can be placed in a state where her skill is far from being on cooldown. Uh, the hero's damage uh, comes from uh, her ability to refresh skill 3. So uh, a lot of people might think that uh, this kind of hero needs a very high hand speed to be able to play well. In fact, it is not. To put it uh, bluntly, Bluntly is the key skills, and uh, hand, hand speed has uh, little to do with. First, let's talk about the operational relationship of Luna's three skills. First, the one and three skills. Uh, the perfect release animation should have skill one and skill three flying together. So, what should a, f a figuring, figuring look like? Uh, first, we should uh, hold skill skill one down and then drag it to the position of skill three button. After releasing skill one, quickly release uh, skill three again, so as to achieve the most perfect effect of skill one and three flying together. Uh, it doesn't sound as complicated as you might think, but being able to use uh, skill three multiple times in practice isn't for everyone, because uh, Luna passive, Luna's passive ability, you can release uh, skill 3 more times in group uh, in team fight by properly 
enter very normal attacks with Luna's ability. In the next tip, I will use the letter A instead of the normal attack. So as a beginner, I think the most practical technique is 1323. This technique is perfect for poking enemies. You don't need a high hand speed and you don't need to focus too much on hitting more serious kills. So it is a very easy and I think it is the most easiest. It is the easiest uh, formula for Luna. And before I introduce the gameplay, I will first demonstrate the advanced operation of Luna. It's an advanced uh, formula. Uh, if you have mastered 1323, try practicing 13A, 2A, 3A, 3. This is a set of high damage technique that's suitable for medium and long range combined. This technique allows Luna to hit three times in a short period of time, which can be used in pursuit or to find him herself in combined with an unhealthy amount of health and run away. Uh, likewise, uh, Luna has a high damage technique for close combined. Uh, that's A1, A3, A3, A2, A3, A3. Because it is close combined, this set of skills uh, start with attacked and can do uh, 3 skill damage 4 times in a short time. The downside of these skills is that it takes too long to enter the battlefield, causing more damage to herself. So is there a trick that can hit 3 times in a short amount of time with minimal damage? Uh, her will be attacked. I mean, there he is. This is the last fix formula trick of Luna, which is A, A, 1, 3, A, 3, A, 2, A, 3, A, 3. Uh, the essence of this technique is that it makes good use of Luna's passive skills so that the hero can stay out of the battlefield twice so that he can have more three skills immediately after entering the battlefield. Um, but uh, for Luna, the hero, there is no root formula. This is very sensory hero. And as you practice her more, you develop a kind of muscle memory and then you can get rid of the formula and have your own unique technique, your unique formula. As I said in the last section, mobile games are multiple and we should keep an exploratory mind to find better answers. There was once a HOK poll recognized as the strongest Luna, but now there are too many people uh, play better than him. Which also reminds me of a classical saying uh, is, uh, no one is always 18 years old, but someone is always 18 years old. Um, so, at the final section, uh, I want to, I also want to uh, have some question to discuss with you. At this point, I have to talk with you about an important topic, uh, that's how society sees its parts. First, is the game can count as its parts? And is esports can count as a sport? I think so. My answer is yes. But my thoughts do not represent the thoughts of society. All the famous esports players I've heard so far are very, uh, their stories are not very good because each player chooses his own esports career with the disapproval of his parents and the reprimand from his teacher. No matter how developed esports are, in the eyes of many adults, it will always be a game for children. There are 1.4 billion people in China, and how many of them have not chosen this path because of the opposition of their parents and teachers? Maybe there are so many people in the 1.4 billion people 
have the talent of esports. I think you can think a little bit more broadly. I admit that most of today's children give up schools because they are addicted to computer games, which is why so many parents and teachers object to their children's excessive exposure to games. But have you ever thought about the fact that decades ago, uh, when people didn't have computers, there, there were still a lot of students who gave up their studies because they were obsessive with something else. I don't think esports and all and games are mental drugs for teenagers. They're just a scapegoat for the, for the times. In every age, people will find something to be the reason for those ignorant young people to neglect their studies. Games are the are the scapegoat of this age. I believe that after a few decades, esports may no longer be the obsessive. Uh, of 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 children, they will be uh, attracted to other things again. But esports is still the sport that can embody the team spirit and individual skills. Uh, there's one more question that is really relevant to my topic today. So, is that mobile game can count as esports? Uh, I do some research about the e-sport. E uh, electronic sport refers to the sports that reach the level of competition. In electronic games, electronic sport is the use of electronic equipment as a sports equipment. The, inter uh, in uh, the intelligence between people against sports through the movement can exercise and improve the participants' thinking ability the reaction ability, uh, the heart-eye limb coordination ability, and the willpower develops the team spirit. Electronic sports uh, have two basic characteristics, electronic and uh, competitive. Electronic is its way and means, refers to the sports is the use of information technology as the core of various hardware and software uh, and the environment created by it, it to play, which is similar to the traditional sports equipment and the vendors in eSports. So equipment relies on information technology, which is uh, the difference between eSports and traditional eSports. So what is competition? Competition, com competition refers to the essence of sports, that is com confrontation. As a sport, competition is the most basic feature. There are many categories and events in esports, but the core must be confrontation and competition. Uh, so ever since I played HOK, On of Kings, I've heard a lot of bad things about mobile games. Many netizens rented online, thinking that mobile games were and insult to insult to esports and that only computer games could count as esports. I think this is definitely wrong. As long as it is in line with the above definition, can can be called esport. And most importantly, I think the development of the times is inventable. I think when the times go forward. There will inventable, uh, inventably be oppositions, but with the in improvement of esports, more and more products into esports get into the esports is what every esport people, esport person really want to see. So some people in the internet uh, say, oh, uh, computer game is better, mobile games is better, mobile games cannot account as uh, esports. I think they are not the truly esport person. So whatever it is, I want to uh, be able to accept it because uh, exist is reasonable, right? And so uh, that's all for my 
uh, RMS 470 final presentation. Thank you guys for listening and uh, have a good summer and have a good day. Bye.